All right, we got Memphis coach Penny Hardaway, uh, senior Alex Lomax, junior Landers Nolly the thir- uh, second, sophomore Errol, Earl Term- yeah, Earl Timberlake. Sorry, uh, we will open up with coach's statement first, and then we will go to questions inside the room. If you guys can hold up your hand, we'll bring a microphone over to you. Uh, for those on the Zoom, if you want to raise your hand for a question, we'll call upon you individually. Coach, we'll start with you. Uh, first, I'll say thank God for this opportunity to even be here in this situation. Uh, we um, we've come a long ways. And to be in a point right now, to be in the semifinal game of the conference, playing against a really well-coached and really good SMU team that's beaten us twice already this year, to be able to come in and understand that there is pretty much a home game for them and still beat them here with everything at stake, with them having the opportunity to make it into the NCAA, us having an opportunity to make it into the NCAA, for the guys to face adversity throughout the game, heavily face adversity, and then come out on top and push through with everything that happened. Jalen getting injured, Tyler catching a cramp, um, DeAndre fouling out. Man, I couldn't be even more proud of these guys. They did a heck of a job. We'll go to the front right and then the green. Question for Earl and uh, Penny. Um, obviously, with everything you said, Jalen, DeAndre's foul trouble, you needed somebody to step up kind of down the front court. What can you just kind of say about Earl's performance? It's <laughs> we we understand who we call him easy. He's easy going, but we know he has game, and he was ready for his moment. He was ready for his opportunity. You know, I told him it can be an obligation, or it can be an opportunity. He seized the moment and and, and and took advantage of an opportunity and came in and played big for us, man. I'm I'm really proud of him. He's been waiting his turn, and tonight he he showed what he can. Well, we already know what he can do, but he showed up for us and played really well. Two things, Penny. Um, right here. The biggest, there was a lot of things that happened that had to happen for you guys to win. But if you picked the most important thing, what was it? And then, and then uh, just the whole sequence with Jalen going down, going out, coming back. And then what's his status? Like, take us through all that. I can honestly say this in the first half, Earl comes in. I had been looking at him the entire half and, and told him, nodded it to him and told him I was going to put him in. And he got in and got a tip in. And right before the end of the half, he made a heck of a block that could have changed momentum uh, for them. And when he got that block, man, that, those are just winning plays. To me, that's like the biggest play of the game because he got a tip in and then he came back right before the end of the half. Josh got beat off the dribble and he, he went up and blocked it right before the end of the half to take us into the half with some momentum. Yeah, Jalen, man, I saw that he fell really hard. Like he hit the court really hard. He didn't get a get the cushion on uh, um, Kendrick Davis. You know, he goes in there and he tries to throw his body into him, and he was up so high that he hit the bottom. And when he fell, I, I was just hoping that his shoulder, his hand, nothing was broken. No, he'll be a little sore, but we'll take that over anything being broken. If you want my waiting for the microphone, just so we can have somebody, we have someone recording it on. Is it a sprain? Uh, he just has it taped right now. They hadn't told us exactly what it was. I just know he's going to be sore. We'll know more tonight. Thank you. Penny, coming into this game, you guys, over your last 13 games, you were 11-2, and two, and those two losses happened to come to SMU. First off, how good did this one feel to get it against them? And second of all, do you guys feel like you're peaking at the right time right now? Well, yeah. You know, the first game, we didn't have everybody. They're still a good team. I've always respected their culture and how they play. They're very smart, and obviously they're well-coached. So the first game, I knew it was going to be tough for us to win because we were under man. And uh, the guys fought their butts off because it's just one of the 5,000-point scores in that starting lineup. It's going to hard, be hard for freshmen to beat them. We came into SMU with high hopes because we were on a streak, and they just beat us handily. It just Kendrick took over the game, and Marcus Weathers took over the game, and the rest of the guys just played unbelievable defense and did what they had to do. I didn't play the game plan that I wanted to play against them in either game, and I went back to what we were doing last year against Kendrick and just making his life hard. And we went back to what we used to do, and it worked. But it does make this win feel much better because we didn't want to go down 0-3 to those guys. And uh, we really wanted to show what we were all about as well. Um, Coach, uh, a couple questions. Obviously, we're far from Memphis, but Memphis fans flooded the stands today, even chanting with that trick, which is the answer. (laughs) (laughs) So did this at all feel like a home game for you guys, being that Memphis showed up in a way that was – massive here at Dickens Arena. And then the second question is, can you just speak to Alo's performance with those crazy defensive plays yeah. throughout the uh, course of the game? Yeah, yeah, it does seem like a home game. We saw the sea of blue and our fans came out to really support. And we really appreciate that because this is a home game for SMU. 
And uh, our fans came out to, to, to make noise and to give our guys the energy, and it, and it helped a lot. And with Alo, nothing surprises me about him. He's a winner. You know, we always talk about winners winning. He just makes winning plays the entire game. Hey, Penny, this is your fourth year. This is your first time going to the championship game. What emotions are you feeling going to your first championship game? <laughs> I feel great. You know, to be, you know, if you'd asked us a month ago, I mean, three months ago, you know, we would have been saying, yeah, we're going to be there. And then we went through the struggle. But now it just feels great because we're playing the type of bas Memphis basketball. Our defense is traveling. And um, anytime we have that, I'm great. But I'm feeling really good behind this. I'm going to enjoy this win tonight. But we know that we have a, a tough Houston team. But to be in the championship, yeah, I feel great. For, for Penny, then I have a question for Alo. Did going through the struggles that you went through this year help? In other words, you saw all the resilience that you built up this year sort of come to play today. Does, did that help today? It does. Everything that we went through uh, from the, um, the Georgia game, how we lost, from the ECU game, how we lost, how we gave up a bunch of points to um, Murray State in the second half, a 50-point half for them to win, uh, playing against a team last night that all the experiences that we had with the nine losses – are coming into play right now when we get into adversity because we've been there before. And then for Alo, did you take it personally to lock up Kendrick? What was your approach there? And what's it like as someone who had to sit out last year during this postseason run to be a part of it, to be popping your Memphis jersey and hearing whoop that trick and everything else? <laughs> I most definitely took the matchup personally. Uh, you know, we play the same position. He's the player of the year. And, uh, you know, I, I go in and just want to be a great defender. So I wanted to take that matchup personal. And I'll talk to the coach about that uh, no matter what. I just want to stay on them. And, uh, you know, also right before the game, we saw a couple of quotes uh, that they said as in, you know, they felt like they were already, they had already won the game before it happened. So they um, they just added fuel to the fire. And uh, that was just something that really just, just stayed on my mind, uh, especially coming into the game today. Oh, man. Uh, after sitting out last year, uh, especially coming into the same practice arenas, uh, when I couldn't even run full speed, and now we're going into there and I'm able to just be on the court. I'm just very thankful. Uh, just to be more health, healthy than I, than I was last year. And uh, just to see the fans come out and being able to give my all for Memphis, uh, that's just the most important thing to me every day. For any of the players, your coach mentioned, obviously Jalen got a couple of early fouls and then hurt, got hurt later on. Dandridge and Williams both got into foul trouble. Was there any point where you thought maybe this wasn't your day or are you surprised to be sitting here getting ready for a championship game tomorrow? Um, like y'all said earlier, with the nine losses, uh, we've been through a lot of different things. And um, um, practice, we always play small sometimes, so we, we just had a lot of experience in those aspects. And uh, we just did a great job of adjusting with Coach Penny, uh, just putting us in the right situations to just weather the storm. And uh, we never we never looked down or got down or got rattled. Uh, we're a very experienced team uh, from last season and this season. So we just always stay forward and just weather the storm. Uh, this is for Penny and, and maybe Landers too. Um, you're down 55-51. It, it's like a media timeout or something. And, and you guys came out and it goes to what you're saying generally. But what did you do, you think, offensively, defensively in those final six minutes where it felt like, you know, that ultimately that's where you won the game? For us, we just got the ball in the same player's hands and they capitalized. You know, they missed a lot of what we call small shots, little bunnies around the rim. Lester and Chiz, uh, Landers made miss a lot of shots. They, they it was winning time, and they they made baskets in the time that we needed them to make them. They had missed in the entire game, and then finally started making them at the end. We ran the same plays; they just capitalized on. Them. Landers, what was that like for you? I mean, this you, you in the first half, especially, it seemed like you missed a whole bunch of shots you've been making lately. Um, how did that last stretch feel to to really? kind of gut out a win when the things when things were stacked against you? Uh, for me, it felt good because um, Coach kept his trust in me. Um, the, co the players, they all kept finding me, and I just tried to find a way to come through for them. All right, in the top middle. Hey, uh, this one's for Penny and then uh, any individual player that wanted to touch on it. Just uh, DeAndre, um, once he fouled out, he wasn't – uh, non-factor in the games. He had energy on the bench. He was talking guys up. Uh, you know, just can you speak to kind of the, the veteran leadership he was showing, especially late in that game? Yeah, he knew he, we know Dre. He felt like he let us down. So the one thing that he could do was cheer and, and be on the sideline, keeping the energy positive. And that's what he was going to do. 
You know, he wasn't just going to sit over there and pout because he fouled out. He wanted us to win the game to have a second chance at it. And uh, when his teammates started playing well and when we were down four with six minutes and 55 seconds on the clock, he was just getting us, getting the guys back up. And, you know, that's what you need. You need the selflessness instead of the selfishness. And in today's game, most players would have been over there pouting because they fouled out. That's just who DeAndre Williams is, man. He's a total team player. Time for a couple more questions. We're going to go to the far right, and then we have two more coming in the middle. Hey, everybody, Earl, Earl Timberlake. I'm sorry. I don't have <laughs> I a question didn't. for Earl. Though. This is for Coach right here. All right. I'll Hello. do this. <laughs> okay, so you, had two, you had two players go down. For us, it really looked like they weren't going to come back. One, what was the conversation like when they said, hey, Coach, I want to come back? And then how was that a testament just not only to the character but the heart of your team? Yeah, well, I didn't I, – I, when I went over to Jalen – he was crying. I was like, oh, my God, I, this has to be bad because he's tough. And he was like, my shoulder. Then he's like, I can't feel my hand. And I was like, is anything broke? I'm like the doctor. I'm checking him out to make sure that nothing was broken. And when nothing was broken, I was like, okay, come on, get up. And then once he <laughs> it's time to get up, nothing's broken. So when he went to the back, I knew he was going to come back. I knew he was going to go back there. He was not going to let us, you know, play without him if he wasn't, if anything wasn't broken. I knew he was going to come back. And with Tyler, he got a cramp. And uh, definitely wanted to come back in the game, but it just shows that those guys really want to win, that they want to be on the court and they want to be there for their teammates. It just shows how tough they are as well. All right, last questions from the friends uh, in the front row. Earl, uh, Earl, um, kind of what Penny was talking about earlier. When you came in, did you kind of sense that what was going on with JD, what was going on with Dre, that you kind of needed to do what you did today? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, coaches preach, uh, be ready for your moment, and I was ready. You know, I got to play today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one last question. Earl, how much do you, I mean, obviously, I would, I would assume you follow college basketball at this time of year and have for a long time. Uh, this is the sort of thing you see at this time of year, somebody who's, you know, steps up when their team needs them. Um, you know, how, how do you feel about that being you tonight? Bro. <laughs> um, this is a blessing. I just wanted to be ready for my moment. Um, just want to be there for my teammates and overall just want to win any way I can help the team. All right. Thank you guys.